CDs had, CDC's had some walkbacks along the way. How important is it to get this exactly right the first time? And, and what are you expecting? Yeah, I mean, Shepard, they they want to be careful. You know, we are we are on the path to this pandemic being over, and they don't want to jump the gun and put people at additional risk. But at the same time, you want people to recognize that when they're fully vaccinated, their life will begin to change. So I expect, as you were saying, that they're gonna they're gonna say that people who have been fully vaccinated can gather with other fully vaccinated people in in small groups without masks, and that's a start. Uh, I would hope they might go so far as to say that grandparents who are fully vaccinated can hug their grandchildren. You know, that's that that would be a wonderful thing, too. But I don't think they're going to be giving the kind of wholesale green light that a lot of people are hoping for. It's going to take a, a further downward trend and it's going to take more uh, people being vaccinated than we currently have around the country. Right. Dr. Besser, the CDC is clear on this one. Everyone should be wearing masks out and about or in public stores or anywhere else. Yet some governors are lifting mask mandates. Now is obviously not the time. But here's the question. When should states consider making a change in their own guidelines and restrictions? Well, you know, Shepard, I, I would like to see states following the lead of our nation's lead public health agency, yeah. the, the CDC, on this. And when I heard Dr. Walensky, the CDC director, say that they are concerned, they're seeing slight upticks in cases in a number of places, they're concerned about the, the variant that was first identified in the UK spreading. You know, in Texas, where they, they, they removed the mask uh, mandate, uh, fewer than 10 percent of people have been vaccinated. And the levels are higher than the levels were last summer when they put the mandates down in the first place. So I worry we're getting a little numb to these numbers and, and we're not... We're not remembering that each day in America, more than 2,000 people are still dying from COVID. Yeah, a little numb and a lot political. You wrote an op-ed today, doctor, in which you criticized Congress for treating, quote, people's physical health and economic health as separate and distinct. Give us the details of what you mean by that and what, it need, and what needs to change. Yeah, I, I think that the, the, the last year made it, made it crystal clear the connection between physical health and uh, economic health. When you look at who is hit hardest in America, Black Americans, Latino Americans, Native Americans, lower income individuals, people who had to leave the house every day to go to work to put food on the table uh, or to pay the rent. Uh, what I called out in this op-ed is the importance of making sure that people have what they need right now in the short term. But in the longer term, we need to see more economic security because across the nation, you see that what people earn in terms of their income is very closely tied to life expectancy and, and quality of life. Uh, the risk people have gone through over the past year of, of eviction with tens of millions of people currently threatened with eviction, uh, the, the fact that 50 million people in, in America um, lacked uh, unemployment insurance, the, the fact that that close to 30 million people going into this pandemic lacked uh, uh, um, uh, health insurance. And the, the idea that you can go through a pandemic where you need access to high quality health care without health insurance, these are things that we have to change for the long term. But in the short term, we need to give people the supports they need so that they can take care of themselves, their families and their communities. Dr. Richard Besser, such good advice. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.